as without touching them. So, so here we go. So who has uh, used ECS before? Yeah, a few people. So let, let's spend maybe a minute explaining what ECS is. So uh, ECS and his uh, companion service ECR are a couple of AWS services launched uh, in, in about a, yeah, a year, a year and a half ago uh, to manage Docker containers on AWS, okay? Um, I expect most of you guys are slightly familiar with Docker, yeah? <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. And so, as you know, you know, running Docker on your, on your PC or, or your laptop, that's fairly easy. Uh, that's not no big deal. But when you start running Docker on, you know, five nodes, 10 nodes, 50 nodes, 100 nodes, then problems, you know, start to arise. Complexity starts to arise. And so we launched those two services, ECS, which is um, uh, uh, orchestrating uh, containers, uh, running containers on a set of uh, EC2 instances pre-installed with Docker. Um, it's free, you know, we hate to say that, but uh, it doesn't, you know, add anything to your, uh, to your uh, AWS build, like, you know, Elastic Beanstalk or CloudFormation, similar thing. And ECR is a Docker registry, a private Docker registry for your containers, okay? And it's pretty cool because you can run, uh, you, can, you can store your Docker images close to your AWS infrastructure, and it's highly available, it's secure, uh, you can apply IAM policies, et cetera, et cetera, all the good stuff that, uh, that we usually provide with services. Interesting. Uh, is ECR mandatory to be used? Yes, Absolutely can not. You, no. you can use any, register, any storage you want. <coughs> it's, you, can use, uh, you can use anything you want. Uh, what I like about ECR <coughs> is that uh, it's private, it's highly available, and I can apply it on policies. Um, you know, which is not exactly what you get with the Docker Hub, yeah. the public one. And if you want a, the private Docker Hub, you know, it's slightly more expensive. <laughs> but yeah, sure. You can, or yeah, if so you have your same, own. Same idea as Sure. You can exactly. Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's like code commits. You know, yeah. uh, it's uh, it doesn't do much more than the public alternative, but you know, it's highly available and very secure. Is it ECS like similar to Docker Swarm? <coughs> oh, let's not get there right now. Come on, slide one. <coughs> <laughs> and someone's gonna ask about Kubernetes on slide two, right? <laughs> <laughs> let, let me warm up a little. Come on, I'm jet lagged to death. You cannot imagine how jet lagged I am. I will get to that. I promise. Okay. Uh, it's I, I double checked. It's available in eleven regions, including Singapore. Okay. Um, we have a lot of partners uh, working with uh, with us on on Docker, um, on ECS. So I'm not going to list them all, but you know, keep in mind that these are available, and you know, you're probably using one or the other. If you, do we have any Rancher fans here? No? No one? Okay. No big deal. I love Rancher, it's very cool. Uh, if you want to run CoreOS uh, 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 instead of the uh, Amazon AMI, that's fine too. If you want to do Docker uh, continuous integration, Docker security, etc. So all these companies are, uh, are, are working with us to make ECS uh, a better and, and a more uh, 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 integrated product. Well, we do have customers too on ECS, right? Uh, this is just a selection. I'm not gonna go through them all. You probably recognize most of these names. Um, to answer your question, there was a very interesting article <coughs> by a, a company called Datadog. I'm sure you know those guys, monitoring company. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, could, uh, I could find that one again if you wanted me to. And they published uh, a study on uh, container adoption. And so they compared, because they have all this monitoring data available, they compared the different you know, technologies that their customers use. And one I interesting data point was the bigger the Docker deployment is, so you know, the more nodes people run, the more containers people run, the more they use ECS, right? So I will not give you my opinion on what it means, uh, but I think it's an interesting thing, right? So, of course, I'll give you my opinion. 
<laughs> that means people playing on their laptop, people you know, playing on their laptop or running maybe a couple of nodes, you know, they might go with alternative technology like Swarm or Kubernetes. But when it gets really serious, you know, 50 nodes, 100 nodes, as it turns out, according to that Datadog study, right, uh, ECS is the number one technology, right? So whatever that means, you know, uh, I think it's an interesting uh, data point. Um, the topic of tonight is scheduling. It's a very specific thing. Uh, so let me explain what we're trying to do here. And this is exactly what we're trying to do, right? We, we've all played this game. If you guys have children, probably you have this in your living room lying around. And of course, we all know that game. We have to find the right spot for the right shape. Okay, and of course, when the grid is three by three and you have a limited number of shapes, this is a really easy game, right? So if you had nine containers to put on your one machine, that's a fairly easy problem to solve, okay? Now, imagine that grid is a thousand by a thousand and, and you have 50 grids, right? You have 50 nodes which are capable of holding a thousand containers or maybe, maybe only a hundred containers. That's a very complicated game, okay? And of course you'll get it, you know, but can you get it in linear time? Probably not, right? The larger the grids, the more grids you have, the more time it will take you to find the right spot, okay? And so scheduling time will not be linear to the, to the size of that grid. And that's a problem, okay? Because it means you're, you're not scalable, and I'm not either, okay? And so the problem that ECS scheduling is trying to solve is no matter how large that grid, no matter how many shapes we have, no matter how many grids we have, we can find the right spot in linear time, okay? And I have references to articles published by uh, Werner Fogels, the CTO of Amazon. We, exp we explain this stuff in more detail there at the end of the presentation. And he has a graph showing that when we scale ECS to 1,000 nodes and we load that cluster to 90%, scheduling time is still linear. So that's what it looks like, uh, very quickly. So a number of instances, which are EC2 instances running Docker um, and running the ECS agent, which is open source. You can't read it, but it's in there. It's on GitHub. You'll get the size, obviously. And connected to that agent, we have the ECS backend, which is going to receive orders from you through the API. And, and it is going to uh, take scheduling decisions put the right container in the right spot, okay? And of course, you can have load balancers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just an example here. So that's the existing architecture. And um, uh, we have a customer called Coursera. I don't think I have to introduce them. Uh, we've been using ECS uh, for, uh, for a while. Uh, and what they do with this is they run, when you, when you run, uh, when, when you run Coursera and you're uh, going through, let's say, uh, a Java course or a Python course or you know any kind of language, you have programming assignments, right, to do. And so you write your code and you upload it to Coursera and they, gr they run unit testing on it and they tell you how good or how bad a job you did. Bad, in my case. Um, and so, of course, this code is highly untrusted, especially mine, and it's really a danger to their platform. So they run it inside Docker containers to make sure that whatever you upload and we upload, it's not gonna take that platform down and you're not gonna use their servers for Bitcoin mining or silly stuff like that. Um, and so they also have lots of other containers running there, uh, you know, reporting and statistics, etc. but they want the grading jobs to run faster because you know, they're more meaningful to their users. And so they implemented their custom scheduler to do that. Okay, to make sure they give m higher priority and more resources to those grading jobs versus their internal processing jobs. And so to do that, they used the uh, AWS CLI um, and they implemented custom logic, etc. So that's option number two here. You can do that. You can call the AWS CLI, get the state, get the list of tasks that are running anywhere, etc., etc., and decide that this new task should be running here. 
Okay, it it's doable. It's it's slightly complicated, but it's doable. Um, if you don't want to do that, then you can let ECS handle uh, scheduling. You create a service. You define a task in there, which is the equivalent of the compose file for Docker. You tell ECS how many jobs you want to run. Uh, you give CPU um, and memory uh, hints to the scheduler saying how heavy that container is going to be, and ECS will figure it out. Okay, so you have the, I would say, the easy automated way and the slightly more custom way. But that was before, right? So <laughs> at reInvent, we announced uh, a slightly more elaborate way of doing things through the placement engine. And the placement engine basically allows developers to specify constraints and strategies, okay, to give you more control on where that container is going to run. So constraints uh, deal with um, the AMI. You could say, hey, that container needs to run on this specific AMI. Uh, availability zone, instance type, uh, distinct instances, make sure you know you spread the containers across as many instances as possible, or custom custom stuff, you know, tags, whatever you want to do. Okay? So that wasn't really easy to do before. Uh, sure, you could iterate through you know the cluster the, the cluster uh, state and find that out for yourself, but it was slightly awkward. So now you can give co constraints directly to ECS and say, okay, this is where I want to run my container. So here's an example. So we're uh, listing the all the instances running on that cluster. And uh, we can use a, a fairly simple query language saying, hey, uh, uh, I want to list, just give me the instances which are T2 small instances, okay? Because this is where I want to run my, uh, my container, okay? So you could match on instance family, instance type. You could match on availability zone, say, hey, please run this container in this specific availability zone, or run it anywhere but in this availability zone, right? And you could use all those constraints to make uh, scheduling decisions. Of course, you can combine them. You could say, uh, give me the uh, T2 small and T2 mediums, which are not running, or, or the J2s <laughs> that are not running in US East 1D. I don't want to you know, know why you'd want to do that, but okay, it's possible. So you can filter your, your instances on all those constraints and use that list of instances to run your containers later. Okay, it's very easy to do. Then the second thing we added is placement strategies. So strategies are uh, uh, deciding how you're gonna spread your, inst your containers across the set of instances that you've selected, okay? So you could bin pack them, so just cram as many containers uh, on, on, on a small, the smallest number of instances, right? So it, depend it could be on memory or it could be on CPU. Obviously, this is a cost-saving strategy, right? To, to minimize the size of your ECS cluster, okay? But from a high availability point of view, it's not so good, okay? But if you just want to have the fullest cluster possible with the smallest number of instances, that's a good strategy. Spreading is quite the contrary, right? Uh, you could say, well, you know, spread across AZs. That's good for uh, uh, high availability. Uh, you could do uh, affinity. You could say, well, uh, I want container A and container B to be close to one another, right? Could be maybe you know a web server and a, a cache container, or you know two services that are you know linked, and you want to you want to make sure they run on the same instance. Or you could have distinct ins distinct instance where you only want one container of any given type to run on one instance. Okay. Again, you could probably do that before, but you know, at the expense of way too many CLI calls and and headaches and custom code. Uh, you can combine strategies, so you could say, please spread across AZs and bin pack. Okay, 
Why not? But at the end of the day, <coughs> what you want to do is place those containers, right? So you can use constraints, you could use strategies, and then based on this, you're going to run your task. And so that's how it goes. First, you take into account constraints. Okay, so uh, how much CPU is left on my cluster? How much memory is left on my cluster? What about network ports, right? There is only one port 80 per instance, unfortunately. So, you know, if you have five instances and you want to run 60 containers on port 80, well, that's not going to work really well, okay? So the custom constraints, which are mentioned, I just mentioned, AMI, instance type, etc. placement strategies, and then you apply all those filters and you have the list of candidate instances where you can run your container. Got it? All right. <laughs> okay. So let's look at a few examples. So I'll just show you a few. There, there are more in the slides, but I don't want, don't want to keep you for hours and hours. So here I'm running a task on a cluster called ECS demo. I've got a task definition. I want to run nine tasks. My placement strategy is spread. Uh, and I'm spreading based on availability zones. Okay, and I've got nine containers. So try to run this in your head. Know what's gonna happen. I could never do that with PowerPoint. So that's why I'm reusing some slides because you know, the clever stuff I cannot do. That's why we have pro program managers, I guess. Okay, so I've got nine tasks, which are spread across three AZs. So that means three tasks per AZ, okay? And, uh, and in this case, it, they've been spread across um, multiple instances. So, slightly different. Here I'm spreading across AZs, but I'm packing them for memory. Figure it out? All right. Okay, so first, spread them, and then pack them. Right? So it's a mix, you know, it's a mix of uh, high availability and, uh, and cost. Okay? Hey. Sure. What's the question on that? So you, you have 12 instances running there. Yep. Uh, in this case, shouldn't the, the scheduler like, kill the, the two x large since they're not used? Uh, that's a different discussion. Uh, but you're right. Uh, I'm just surprised to see unused. <coughs> uh, so the, your question is more on how do we scale in and scale out the cluster? Okay. Uh, here I could have a fixed size cluster with 12 nodes and still do that, right? Because maybe I'm, I'm keeping the J2s for GPU or you, or jobs. Or, okay? that, that but yeah. you're right. The, 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 the better way would be, in fact, to say, well, as you say, you know, I've got nine instances that are clearly useless here. I'm paying for nothing, right? Uh, so I should be able to detect that my cluster is over-provisioned and I would scale in and remove instances. <coughs> okay, and you can clearly do that with auto-scaling, okay? The traditional way, you would say, well, CPU... Okay, so that's, that's like out yeah. of ECS, it's... Yeah, it's EC2 stuff. You, you use the EC2 auto-scaling to scale your... Yep. Your hosts, yep. and then the, 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 the yep. Docker instance will then be scaled yep. or spread to be more correct. In exactly. Way. So it's it's really it's two different discussions. Okay. How do I how do I allocate enough in situ instances to my cluster so it could be fixed size or it could be auto scaled using the EC2 auto scaling that like, that we all know, and then based on that, where do I put my containers? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can do that with ECS services as well. So uh, here's another example where that first service is going to be, so the, the yellow one is going to be bin packed on memory. 
and the purple one is going to be spread on AZs. Right, so bin pack means just cram, cram them. And that other one, you know, is more, let's say, maybe more critical for your platform and you want to spread it. Okay, so you have that flexibility. You can go really crazy with this. Uh, here's another one. Uh, dis distinct instances. So uh, the yellow one needs to run on G2. Probably it's the GPU container. But they need to be on separate instances. And the purple one is T2 small or T2 medium on distinct instances. But hey, we have a problem here, right? Not all of them have been placed because I've, I only have two G2s and I have a third task to run, but you know, there's a constraint there. And same for the purple ones. So the only option here is to add instances. That's why you're EC, uh, EC2 I, auto scale. Yeah, you could do, yeah, and you could do. So EC, ECS doesn't do the scaling for you. So you have ECS metrics uh, for uh, cluster wide metrics and service wide metrics that go through CloudWatch, alarms, blah, 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 the usual way. And at the end of the day, you're adding uh, more nodes to the cluster. Yeah, okay. okay. But you have ECS metrics as well. You have visibility. Yeah, so ECS is sending metrics to CloudWatch, yeah. and then you have your auto-scaling rules. Exactly. The, 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 tool based on the, the usual way. Yeah. And so if we want to add some more stuff here, same story, you know, blah, blah, blah. OK, so be careful with distinct instances because that's exactly what it means, right? It's one per node. So it could be costly, okay? So that's a, what I, we just saw there, you know, constraints and, uh, and, um, <coughs> and placement strategies. They just give you, you know, you could do that before, but you would end up writing a lot of code and no one wants to do that, right? We're lazy. So now you have an easier way to do it, okay? But let's go one step further. Yes? Uh, one affinity placement strategy. Can I have a more than two containers that can be right on the... Yeah, uh, the, the affinity will be based on, 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 a, on like a tag, like a group name. So you could have two, three, four. Oh, yeah, yeah, more than two. Sure. So now let's go a little further. So we added another brick. It's called the event stream. And the event stream is exactly what it means. Is whenever whenever something happens on the cluster, that's gonna trigger an event. So uh, you know, a container starting, a container stopping, dying, blah blah blah. Anything happening. Okay. In real time, you want to uh, get those events, send them to CloudWatch and obviously do something about it, right? If your one of your instance dies and it takes a whole lot of containers with it, you know, you want to do something about that, okay? Quickly. And so we can send those events to different services. But specifically, what, what I want to show you tonight is something even weirder. Now we get into weird territory, which is blocks. Who has heard of blocks? All right, no one except you and Kai, I suppose. <laughs> okay, so, so we are in weird territory. Okay, so what is blocks? So blocks is not an AWS service, okay? Blocks is, um, it's an open source project that AWS launched to, uh, you know, to create a community, a development community uh, around ECS and ECS projects, okay? So I'll go back to that, but for now, just keep in mind that what we're trying to do, we're, gonna, we're trying to grab all those events happening on ECS clusters. We wanna send them through CloudWatch events to a queue, right? Right there. And we'll have blocks here, reading those events and taking action, okay? Specifically, we have two blocks, we have what we call the cluster, the cluster state service, which is basically um, 
uh, a, key via a key value store which knows exactly how, what the cluster looks like, okay? What are the what are the containers running where, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we'll use we can write a scheduler based on the the events that are uh, uh, coming through CloudWatch and based on the current state. And by combining both, we can implement pretty complex uh, scheduling strategies. Okay, with this architecture. So now this is what it looks like, right? So you could be, well, you could be that guy here, right? Who doesn't want to know anything about this, okay? And just do it the, the previous way, okay? Just make sure I have three copies of container A and I have five copies of container B. That I don't care where they run, just make it happen, and the load balancer just will find them. And that's a perfectly sane way of doing things. But some customers, like Coursera and others, they need more control. And they need a lot of control on the, what's happening. And they will be the guys on the right hand side going through uh, writing their own scheduler and going through something like blocks or their own code to implement complex scheduling policies. Okay, so you have the easy way you know, not worry about it. <laughs> and the powerful way w which, you know, you need to work on. Um, so while I explain this, let me start my demo because of course there's a demo. This is the most dangerous of demos to do with jet lag. But let's do it. Can you, no, it's probably still too small. Can you read okay in the back or? That's okay? All right, just yell if you, if you can. Okay, so. So we're gonna do this in Singapore, of course. So I need to create two clusters. I will explain why in a second. So first I need to create a cluster, an application cluster. Well, I'm gonna run Nginx on that one. And I'm gonna launch, or actually I can do it in the console here. I'm going to launch the CloudFormation template to create all this, all the block stuff. And uh, don't worry, I will explain this in a minute. <coughs> Is that how I called it? Uh, yeah, blocks cluster, blah, 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 blah. Uh, next. Next, yes, okay, go. It's all live. No pre-cooked deal tonight. I live dangerously. Maybe I'll regret it in five minutes, but hey. <laughs> it's all for you guys. Okay, <coughs> so, so how this works is, like I said before, I have a cluster on the right side well, that I call the application cluster, the one that really runs my containers. And it's gonna live its life and stuff is gonna run, stuff is gonna crash and, you know, the software life. So whenever something happens, events are gonna go through CloudWatch events to an SQS queue <coughs> and to blocks, right? And the scheduler is gonna receive those events and do something about it, okay? Right, so, and this is running on an ECS cluster as well, okay. So the CloudFormation template that I launched creates all of this, okay, creates an ECS cluster with the scheduler and uh, that, and the SQS queue and the CloudWatch rule, etc. And uh, the other cluster, the application cluster, is this one, okay. 
So basically, this is what I just did. I wrote my template to create blocks, which creates an event rule, the SQS queue, the scheduler, the state service. It's, al it's also using etcd uh, for, uh, for a key value store. There's an API, which I can invoke to, uh, to get to the scheduler. And this is the other one, OK? And it should be ready in a minute. And once this is all running, right, I'm going to use the scheduler API using uh, a, a tool that is included in the blocks code to basically start managing the application cluster. OK? <coughs> so let's see if this is done now, or should I wait a little bit? OK, obviously, I should wait a little bit. So let's just wait a second. So I can see my blocks cluster here. I can see my w the, the application cluster that I called web cluster here. OK, that one is ready. And the blocks one is almost ready. OK? OK, let's wait for a minute. Do you guys have questions while we're waiting for this? Yeah. That's all right. Taking one question. Yeah. Is there any plan in the future to have blocks like as a service? Ah. <coughs> it's a it's a good question. Um, it's a good question. I, I'm sure there was this discussion at some point. Uh, I was I, I have to admit I was extremely surprised. I was at reInvent and I was extremely surprised to see this announcement. Uh, you know, I thought we would keep investing in ECS and, you know, more, I would say, more on a managed service level. But um, I'm not saying we're not going to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure we will keep seeing features okay. in ECS, completely managed, completely, you know, on the shelf, off the shelf, etc. cetera. Um, but we also have this open source project. And I think it's nice. It's an interesting way of doing things because I guess the open source project can move much faster, or right? That it when it's a managed service. Open source project blocks it, it's like just updating the managed service. Because you're just trying to maybe you maybe you that's have run, yeah. you have to run uh, your, your cluster sure. to, to manage your stuff that manages the other cluster. But yeah. manage the cluster that manages. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> no, the blocks cluster is super simple. Uh, you know, it's a. Uh, it, it could run on an EC2 instance, you know. It could Amazon run. Amazon can take away the EC2, so yeah. Yeah. That happens. <laughs> sure. So, um, so my point is, I think it's interesting to have both the managed service, which is you know, stable, production grade, um, and that that keeps evolving nicely, you know, not too fast because you can't break the production of you know all of all of the yeah. customers. Mm -hmm. And to have an open source project where people who really need to have the bleeding edge stuff can experiment mm -hmm. and contribute, and maybe you know it's gonna feed uh, back know. into the uh, it's gonna feed back into the uh, we're almost there. <laughs> it's gonna feed back into the, um, the the managed service. I think it's interesting to have both, right? And uh, I, I'm not an expert on, on Kubernetes, but I have the feeling this is pretty much what is happening there too where you have the Kubernetes, you know, the actual open source project that goes very fast, and the, uh, the managed version by Google, which is probably, you know, more conservative. So I think it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So, yeah, the EC2 instance is, come on, we should be ready now. <laughs> more? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's getting there. Okay. Maybe you try to refresh the cache. Yeah, it's maybe just the console playing tricks on me. Yeah, it's a bad reason cash for. Okay, well, we'll just pretend it's done <laughs> and start launching <laughs> stuff. Oh, no, it's the API gateway that's slowing me down. All right, come on, API gateway. <laughs> okay, one more question. We have time for one more question. <coughs> on anything, come on, ask questions. Yes. Anyone knows why we have Canadian pizza in Singapore? No? That's a good question. I don't have the answer to that. All right, so the cluster's ready now. 
So, well, maybe I can just sit down. So the first thing I want to do here Uh, the first thing I want to do is to get rid of the silly branch. Uh, what's it called, Dave? All right. Okay. Um, okay, so I've got a few task definitions ready. It doesn't really matter what I'm going to run on that uh, application cluster. It's going to be Nginx. Uh, we don't care so much about that. It's just an excuse, okay? So first, what I need to do, okay, let me show you that thing once again, just to make sure it's perfectly clear. Okay, so this is the, the blocks cluster, this is the application cluster, and right now nothing is running in there. Okay, if I show you this one right now, it's the, it's the other one, it's yeah, web cluster, it has three instances, and it's totally empty, okay? No tasks running there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna call this thing here, which, which is hopefully, yeah, the right one. And so what I'm doing here is I'm invoking the scheduler API on the blocks cluster, telling it, okay, Please create an environment, which, I'll, which I call the web environment. This environment is going to run on the cluster called web cluster, which is my application cluster. This environment includes this task definition, so my engineering definition. Okay, and and that's it. Okay, so basically, I'm telling my blocks scheduler, hey, you guy, you you can manage this uh, environment based on this task definition on the cluster called web cluster. So this puts web cluster under blocks management, basically. Okay? Right? But this is just declaring it, okay? Nothing is running. What is gonna make it run? And don't worry, you've got all this stuff in the slides, but it's so much more fun to show you demos. What's gonna actually do the trick is this. Okay, create a deployment, which means, okay, now do your thing. Ah, yeah, dot. Now do your thing, okay? So now you've got this application, this web cluster under management, do your thing. But hey, what's the scheduling policy here? Right? That's the question you should have asked. There's a deployment, there's a scheduler, right, in that blocks cluster. What's the policy? Does it bin pack? Does it, what does it do? So this guy here included in this demo is called the daemon scheduler. And basically it means it will run one container on each, one and only one container on each node, like a, like a daemon, right? We make sure that container is running everywhere, okay? And now if I look at my container once again, I see three tasks. And I see that indeed each task is running on a separate instance. Okay? So what about... Um, What about adding nodes? <coughs> okay, so I'm adding more nodes to that cluster. And if the scheduler works, okay, try to understand what's happening there. More nodes are gonna join the cluster that's obviously going through the event stream into the scheduler that says, hey, more nodes, good. I'm the daemon scheduler. I need this Nginx guy to run on every single node. So I'm gonna start three more containers, each running on a separate instance. 
Okay? So you, here you're adding EC2 instances. Sorry? You're adding EC2 instances. Yeah. Hopefully. Just give them a minute to start. Uh, yeah, that should work. Just need to wait for them to join. Okay, we can check that out. Okay, so here, all right, maybe I should show you just the project for a second. Okay, so there's a, there's a GitHub page for this which is here. Okay. And you will find, so that's the demo CLI tool that I used to send scheduling commands. And that's the cluster state service sources here. And that's the daemon scheduler here. Right. Okay, so it's all open source. You can you can check it out. You can send your pull requests. Uh, you can create issues. You can yell at the maintainers. You know, uh, it's all there. Is there any migration tool? Let's say if I want to migrate from current Kubernetes cluster. Uh, no. No. Uh, no, there's no, uh, there's, n there's nothing like that. I mean, obviously, you can take your images and run them uh, uh, on ECS. Uh, you can you reuse your, doc your uh, Docker Compose files. We support that. Um, but I would say that's it, right? The, the common, you know, uh, the common thing between the different orchestrators are, you know, the Docker images and the Docker Compose files. So I've got my six instances here, and of course, I have my six tasks running okay right so this is a super basic strategy you know the daemon scheduler but again it's all open source you can go and, and and learn from that and build something more complex okay and 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 sure I could have done this using uh, uh, using a service and using the distinct placement strategy okay so this is really you know this is really heavy, heavy stuff to get to a fairly simple result, but you know, uh, it's a, it's a demo. It's a simple demo, and and again, it's open source, and you can learn from that. Okay, so I would say for ninety percent of, of the people, you know, you you probably won't need that, but keep in mind that if you have custom strategies, you know, uh, and and when you get to you know seventy, eighty nodes, uh, hundred nodes, you know, things get complicated. And uh, and you have to do that. All right. So we saw that stuff. All the commands are in there. If you want to replay that demo, you can do it. Nothing hidden. So these are the articles, the Werner articles I mentioned. Pretty good read. Uh, that's the blocks URL, and there's a page there with all the ECS demos. Uh, the ECS, sorry, videos and demos from reInvent. So check check them out, there are lots of good stuff there. Okay, well, I'm done, so thank you very much. Uh, if you have questions, you know, I'm still there. Thank you. And, uh, you know, really cool to be in Singapore. Thanks. And of course, I need to put you guys on Twitter. So. so. <laughs> Uh, we're kind of running late on time here. Um, for additional questions, so I think you can tie corners. Sure, again. sure. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we, move, we move on to uh, 